Hello everyone, Sorry here and today we're going to play the new champion Aphelios. Now the deck we're going to be playing is an invoke deck that used to be Zoe Diana, but now we cut out Diana and we added Aphelios instead. I'll be going through the new cards I've added, which are Gifts from Beyond. It offers us a move weapon that can be useful in different situations of the game. I'll go through the move weapons later on and I'll explain how they can be useful in different scenarios. We also added the Fangs. The Fangs has Lifesteal, which prolongs the game for us. And at the same time, it invokes a Celestial card that costs 3 or less. So it pretty much is value for our deck. And because we have Mountain Scryer, we can drop our Celestials for a cheaper cost. We are also running the new landmark, the Vile Temple. What Vile Temple offers us is value over time. So technically after two rounds, the Vile Temple should be giving us the value for its cost. What it offers us is two mana every round if we play two cards. It also buffs our strongest ally by plus one plus one. Now if you've never played Zawidiana before, I'll explain briefly how this deck works. Usually you want to play your units, you play your Celestial units, you get value out of them, you chip in some damage from on your opponent's nexus, and to end the game, you want one of your big units, such as the Mortal Fire, the Destroyer, or the Great Beyond to hit face and pretty much end the game. You also have two Atrocity in case you can just finish off the game, you end the game with an Atrocity. Now the difference between Diana and Aphelios, Diana would offer us a really good early game because she has Quick Attack and Challenger when we drop it on Nightfall. It can trade with the unit and remain on the board. Now what Aphelios offers us is a lot of Moon Weapons. We'll explain what the moon weapons are. So the moon weapons are useful in different situations. The first moon weapon is Calibro. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it deals three damage to a follower. What this offers us is a way to remove units from the board. And since we don't really have reliable removal in the deck, this can be helpful in a lot of situations. For example, your opponent could have a ballistic bot on board. This card offers us a solution. Another weapon is Severum. Severum gives us plus one, plus two, and life steal for one round. This is good against aggro decks, so we can prolong the game, maintain our health nexus. So this is useful in that current situation. Another card is Gravitom. Gravitom stuns a unit. If it's a follower, it stuns it for two rounds. If it's a champion, it stuns it for one round. This is good, especially if your opponent is going to drop a unit with an overall ability. So we can stun it and not take the damage. Inferno is a card that gives us Overwhelm, which is really useful. I'll explain in a second why it's really useful. Our last one is Crescendo, which basically offers us a two-cost follower from our deck. Now back to Inferno and Severo. What these two cards are offering us are Lifesteal and Overwhelm ability. Now combined with our landmark that's on board, our landmark over time is buffing our strongest ally by plus one plus one. Now imagine if you give this strong ally an overall ability to hit face. So that's a lot of damage you're pushing now. You don't always have to need your great beyond or the destroyer or your uh, mortal fire. You have also a secondary win condition just from one card. You also have Severum, which you can also give it to a really buffed up unit you have on board. And you pretty much heal for a lot. So in a nutshell, this is the idea of the deck. We are going to take it on ladder and try it out. So without further ado, here we go. Alright, so we are going against an Israel Aphelios deck. Does, does this work? Maybe. Can you level up Israel in time? Like, can you level them up fast enough? With uh, your moon weapons, you only have two moon weapons that target enemy units. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure, but our hand is actually nice here. We're only missing Lunar Dustbringer here. Okay, and we, and we top decked it. That's actually an awesome hand. Okay, and now we can play our Aphelios here. I'm not sure if he runs a, a beam here. So he could could have a thermogenic beam and just kills it. Okay, we just pass. And we drop our Aphelios. 
But what do we want? I feel we want the, the three damage so we can kill uh, his uh, his uh, ballistic bot here. Alright, so we play... Uh, what do we want? Wait. What is, what is each one? Stun? Lifesteal. I actually would want to go with lifesteal. We don't, I don't think we need the stun. Maybe? What, what if he drops Ezreal next round? And we don't have an answer. I'll go with uh, the stun because he could drop Ezreal not next round, the round after it. When it says attack turn. So we can stun his Ezreal so he doesn't like get a free attack. Uh, okay, we can play this here. We just passed here. I can't really attack. So I could play sister. On spot. Oh. Okay. So. I went for killing my police immediately. I could drop my... Uh, I could play this first. And see what we can get. Heal 3 damage is fine. We can kill something here. I don't think he's gonna attack. And we can go for... I will go for summon I guess. So yeah, we got the two mana we needed from my landmark, uh, and we buffed our affiliates. So this is fine. We can let it through, but I will have to kill this on spot here. Uh, yeah, we can go for the life steal, I guess. Uh, uh, okay, I think he wants to kill my. Uh, Aphelios next turn. The thing is, I can save him, but it's gonna cost me the extra mana, so we won't have extra mana. I think it's fine, I think it's worth. I can save him with my star shaping here. Yeah. For him to attack like that, it means he doesn't have a uh, another mystic shot. Alright, we just pass here. So, I wanna play sisters, if we can. Sister. If he actually lets me. But now we can't, since we need a blocker. So, I'm possibly gonna play the fangs here. Since it can't block. And he's pretty much out of mana. I like Moonglow here. I actually like Monglo. We can actually keep our Aphelios alive next turn. So we can play this. We want the. I'll go for this, I guess. The life steal. I can actually play it here and just level him. I don't I don't really mind. And I'll go for the overwhelm one for next turn. This is literally good. Wait, could I have played it next turn and I got it afterwards? 
Then I'll have a uh, life seal and overarm on him. Probably. Yeah. I mean, we don't really need the healing that much. We're at 18 right now. Uh, we play Munglo now. And we can pass. We can play sisters here. And the warrior is really nice. So technically we drop the warrior, we get two extra mana and we can play our one weapon. Please. Okay. All right, yeah. So warrior now, we get two mana extra, he gets buffed. And we play our overwhelm card. So we'll be dealing damage. Oh, okay, he stunned him. That's fine. Uh, I'm still gonna play this here. But what do I take? Uh, I don't need to summon stuff. I think the three damage is alright. We can kill a unit, so I think that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna attack with uh, my mo uh, my goat first, then Aphelios, because if he wants to block with fangs, he doesn't heal, pretty much. Oh, Zoe is really nice here. Okay, he has the landmark as well. Uh, deal 3 damage and we can go for... What's the other? Oh, a stun. Okay. So we can go for the stun. I think stun is fine. Now I can drop um, Mortal Fire and I can drop Zoe. And I can also play my more weapons uh, that uh, Aphelios is gonna generate for me. So, pretty much... Perfect curve right now. The landmark is giving us a lot of value. Alright, so we play a more... We can play start with Zoe, I think. If he wants to mystic shot it, that's fine. Okay. That's alright. So now we play the stun. What do I want though? Let me see. No, okay, we want the over one. Of course, we want the over one. We go for the stun. So now with his, with his 5 4, he can't block next turn. And we have our immortal fire now. Okay, so we give it plus two, plus one, and overwhelm ability. And we attack, we pull the bot, and yeah. Oh, I could have played the gemstone on regardless any unit. Like, it could have been Aphelios or our, our Mortar Fire. And the landmark could have buffed plus one, plus one. Yeah, that that's a misplay. Okay, we can drop Fang here. Uh, I want the elusive because he's dropping elusives now just to block in case Prime 
Yeah, I don't see him coming back from this. It's really hard and he's kinda out of cards. Okay. Yeah, the drone is, is real as well. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I just want to play it here. So we can trigger our... Uh, our landmark. And we can get another uh, weapon. I feel like this is really good, but we don't want to draw two of it. Uh, at least later on, and early on. I feel it's so useless. As, like, it takes a lot on board, and you don't really need it that much, I feel. I feel one is enough. Maybe running three isn't really ideal in the deck. I'm not sure. Needs a little bit more testing to see how it feels. But yeah, we won, and the deck is actually fun. It really requires you to, uh, it really requires you to think ahead of what more weapon you wanna take, depending on what will happen next round, preferably. But yeah, like for example, you can take a more weapon that stuns. And your opponent can drop, I don't know, like a Gangplank or a Trindamir. And you know they're probably gonna drop a Gangplank or a Trindamir next round. So you can stun them, so you don't take the damage. So things like this are really important to keep in consideration. But yeah, the deck is fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.